Hello, my YouTube friends. I'm going to make some house numbers, and um, I've already uh, rolled out slab. Yeah, I'm putting a piece of plastic over this just to keep from having this lid. This goes to wood filler, and I'm just going to put the plastic on here to keep the lid from sticking to it. So I'm going to center it up. I'm probably going to reduce the size of these to about what this lid is. And the lid is about a 4x4. Four four. So I'm not going to press it in there to try to cut it. I just want the shape. Should I do this first? So I guess each one may be a little different. <laughs> Get a little zigzag going in there. I like that. Do that on this one. I kind of do like that. <laughs> I do like these. I like this thing better. It's easier. <laughs> it's definitely easier. And that's going to really pick up the um, the glaze and make it... So I'm going to smooth this out if I can a little bit. So I can get a like a almost a do-over on this. Just to... All right, let's get rid of that. Now that looks more like the others. One of these things is not like the other. Okay. Oops. All right. Now let's just do this one. Okay, these have little goobers on it, but you can get those off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go crazy here. Those are easier to get off after the thing is kind of dry. my lines so there's now i'm not done with that i'm just that's just mapping it out so um i needed two fives right so we're gonna do a five Okay, so that's probably deep enough. I'll do the rest of them and see, you know, how it looks. And this is the part where you can correct things if you need to, like just slightly, you're not gonna be able to change a whole lot, but and you want to get the little trough that you're making, you want to get it 
deep enough that it will hold um, a nice amount of glaze. Now, before I go any further, I need to fix this little problem right here. There we go. Now, it's easy to fix that, those little outline things, because your texture is so uh, random, I guess you could say, that, okay, those will just come to right there. Okay, so I think we got that. Okay, now on the ones that are on the outside of my house, in this little trough, I put, uh, I couldn't decide what color of anything to put in there. Actually, I just fired them with kind of a rust uh, rusty looking color of uh, matte glaze and and so against that so that was kind of a reddish warm reddish color you know rust color so to contrast I wanted something that would contrast the colors so that uh, emergency vehicles could, of course, see this from the street. So, I put turquoise pastel in there. And of course, blue is a fugitive color in almost anything in clothing dye or uh, pastels or paint. Blue is a very fugitive color, so... Uh, I didn't think it would last very long, but it did. And I even fired that sucker and it still didn't go away. Anyway, cause it's cause I wanted to put um, some glaze in there. But what I've done, probably only about twice, maybe once every 10 years or so, I have gone out there and reapplied the, um, the turquoise just uh, because it looked like it was beginning to fade and I knew I didn't want to take them off the wall. I hope I have the right numbers. There's a close-up. Here's, here's a good close-up of the texture and then the, the little impression of the number. So I put the lid back on here and one of them stuck, so I thought, well, this might be just a good thing. And I'll just take the opportunity, while this is still pretty wet, to trim around this. And they will all be just perfectly the same size and shape. So I'm taking the lid of that wood filler container and just trimming around the edge just where I where I had it marked. Oh, you want to be careful it doesn't come off while you're while you're cutting. So we'll just put it just like that and check around and see if you've missed anything. That looks pretty good. I 
there. So so then I can just bend the, the little lid and it'll come off. One little secret to this is, um, let me set this down, is if you do use something plastic, dry it off between the times that you stick it on. So for an example, I'm going to dry this uh, little rim off. It doesn't stick as much if it's dry. So here I'm going to do one from from the start here. Let's see, can you see me? Yeah. So I'm going to make sure I have that in that little marked area that I had before. Ooh, this one feels, this one feels like I may have gotten it a little, the, the actual tile, I probably got it kind of wet, but I'm not going to stick it down too much. It's not going to require that. So I'm going to make sure it's stuck around the edge and that's all. And then, then I'll take my, um, this one I better do I better do this way first because it's so wet. I think I got this one too wet when I was making the numbers in there. So I'm just gonna go around the edge kind of sloppily and then I'll get the fine tuning here in a second. Okay. May not need a whole lot of fine tuning, so but this there's less danger now of my pulling it off of here and then having a dickens of a time trying to reposition it, so. So there we go. Let me get this corner better. Okay. Okie dokie. It's the next day. Goodness, it's the next morning. And um, I just want to show you these. I have taken a sponge and gone around the edges and touched up any of the texture that I accidentally messed up or smudged. And so these are ready to dry and bisque fire. Now, when I dry things that are flat, sometimes, a corner will peel up or something, but I'll keep, these are in the house now, as you can see, we're in here where I do glazing, and I'm just gonna keep an eye on them and see what happens. But anyway, you won't, you probably won't see these again until after they're bisque fired, and, um, and when I'm gonna glaze them, I'll probably bring you in on that, okay? Take care, thank you very much for watching, love you, bye-bye.